Here's Alex, a course member in my real estate investing course, so we can learn how to make money in real estate, who got the Matterport Pro 2 camera we're gonna be demonstrating in this video. And he ended up landing two deals pretty quickly into him starting his business, and he's getting paid $5,000 per deal. Even if those took him all day long to do, he just made $10,000 in two days following the steps in this video. Hey everyone, meet Kevin here. In today's video, I'm going to introduce a business to you that can make you $100,000 a year or more, all for pushing a button. Here it is, the button and a push. Let's get started in today's video on how to make $100,000 pushing a button. That's right. What are these 3D, 360 degree virtual tours? Well, here is an example. Essentially, you click a link and as a viewer, you can explore a property. You could walk yourself through a property. Rather than looking at distorted wide angle images, you could get a real sense for the size and layout of a property. And so as a result, in today's video, I'm going to introduce my two favorite cameras to you. I'm going to tell you all about the pros and cons of using each of them, and I'm going to show you some real examples examples so that you can compare the quality yourself and find out which one is going to be best for your needs. However, and as always, make sure to take out that hammer and smack that like button. This right here is called the Matterport Pro 2 camera. The Matterport Pro 2 has a 360 degree vision from left to right, and it can see up and down by about 300 degrees. The camera takes about four and a half hours to fully charge, and it's very important not to let this battery die. But the battery does last quite a while. So if you're operating a business and you're doing multiple scans in a day, the battery lasts about eight hours, and that's despite the fact that the body actually has to turn itself. So there's a very large and powerful battery in here to keep this thing operating and to keep you in business all day long. Because after all, I figure if I can help you make a lot of money, there'd be no reason for you not to use that coupon code down below and join me in my amazing real estate programs. Also, don't forget, deposit $100 and get two free stocks with Weeble. Now, 3D virtual tours are cool themselves, and we're about to review the cameras and do some side-by-side -side comparisons, but realize the power of these cameras as well. They allow you to measure the property after you scan it, which makes architecture work or simple construction jobs like, oh no, I forgot to measure the stove. No problem, let me open up the app. Really useful and easy. Now, as far as actually operating it, there's not much to do here. There's really only one button the on button on the camera. The second button is just to see how full your battery is. But look, if it turns on, you don't even have to worry about that. There's just an on button. So you turn it on and you pop it on your tripod. I'm gonna link down below my favorite gear equipment for this, but because this is a heavy camera that turns, I highly recommend you get a very quality and sturdy tripod for this. I happen to be using the Manfrotto MVT502AM, which again, the link for that will be down below, but I have never dropped this camera or had this wobble over or tip over. As long as everything's nice and tight, this gets amazing shots. Now, as far as using this, once once the power button is on, all you really have to do is connect to the camera's Wi-Fi network. After you connect to the camera's Wi-Fi network, you're going to open up the Capture app, which is something you can download from your app store. I do believe they only have this in the Apple app store though. So if you are an Android user, you might have to buy yourself an inexpensive refurbished iPad to be able to use the Capture app, which is not a bad idea anyway, because honestly, when I'm scanning with this, I like to use the iPad, so that way I can press scan, this thing starts spinning, and then I just sit there and respond to emails or schedule other appointments or make phone calls. If you're operating the app, you can't really leave the app because most of the time it gets disconnected when you leave the app. So having a, a, like a cheap mini iPad or something like that, even a used one, which is what this is, is a nice way to keep you productive while this thing's spinning around. Because even though the website says it's like 20 seconds per scan, you know, you're gonna wanna be on your phone while this thing's scanning, okay? Take it from me, I've done almost 100 scans with this thing, like this, this thing's like my baby. Now, once you get inside the app, all you have to do is 
hammer the like button. <laughs> and your job literally gets done for you. This is where I could be, a, you know, if I was doing this with my iPad, I could be on Instagram, I could be sending some emails, or whatever, hanging out, doing whatever I want. This thing spins around four different times, so you kind of get used to this waning noise than it does, or whatever. And it usually takes another little moment to process its last photo. Usually, by the way, at this point, I'm walking back to the camera, and now I'm lifting up the tripod, walking it over to my next spot where I want to scan him, drop it down, make sure my height's correct, everything's good. Lots of tips and tricks for that. So do let me know, by the way, if you want me to go in detail and walk through a property with this. I'll do a follow-up video if y'all really want. Let me know in the comments down below. But you move it to the next spot. And uh, let's just go ahead and move it back a little bit over here. Uh, let's move it, there we go. All right, uh, so you can see on my iPhone here, it's already kind of pinned down uh, this scan. Uh, so I've moved it only about a foot, so this Number two, essentially, should show up relatively close to the number one and start filling in some more detail. Now, generally, you don't want to be in the shot. You want to hide. So there is a little bit of time in actually pushing the button uh, after you walk away and then walking back after the scan is done. Sometimes I try to trick the lens, and when the lens isn't looking at me, I'll try to sneak up behind it, but I always end up in the shot. So this is not the best tool for being super fast, but this is by far the most detailed. Uh, and so you can see here we've got scan one and two complete. And if I click on one of these, I can actually preview the scan that I have. Look at that, that's not bad. You can see the set there, and look, there I am talking to all of y'all. There we go. Which, by the way, if you want a studio tour, let me know in the comments down below as well. I'm happy to do that and break down some of the equipment in here. But uh, just for giggles now, let's go ahead and move this camera to the other side and just kind of see it fill in the space. All right, so now I've moved the camera all the way to the other side. I've gone ahead and pushed the scan button. So this should really fill in the data uh, for the area the other side of the office. Which, uh, the cool thing about this is you can really get a good preview of what it sees and what it doesn't see. You can tell that it hasn't really scanned any data behind the Meet Kevin sign here. So if that were another bedroom or something like that, I could do a quick check here and go, oh, I haven't gotten a good detail over here. There we go. So you can see over here, it's filled in this part of the room. You can see there's a cable on the floor right there. Yeah, that's really cool. And there's that kind of 300 degree viewing angle, that hole that you see there. Now, if I put the camera two feet closer to me, that hole will obviously disappear. But this gives you a really good idea as to what this looks like. And see, there you go. Here's another preview so you can kind of get an idea of what scan you took and if there were any abnormalities in it. If there were any issues or for some reason the scan was misplaced, the camera accidentally put the number three in the wrong spot, I could delete that scan and rescan. Some other things you're supposed to do as well would be things like marking the windows and marking mirrors. So I marked a mirror along that back wall there and I'm gonna go ahead and mark a window along this. This is really important if there actually are mirrors or if they're actually open windows. So that way it tells the software not to pull the data from outside those windows or outside the walls. Otherwise it gives you kind of a little messed up tour. It's more jiggity jaggedy as you're walking through and you want these virtual tours to be buttery smooth. So this is super helpful. Once I'm done with my scans, all I have to do is press this little uh, cloud upload button. There we go, upload. Perfect, and then I sit around and wait. Now, in an hour or maybe 90 minutes, I'll get an email, hey, congrats, your Matterport scan is complete. This is what your virtual tour looks like, here you go. The more scans you take, the longer the processing is actually going to take on their server's end, which does also make sense. So if you do a quick like 20 scan house, that's gonna process a whole lot faster than you doing a detailed like 120 scan house. House. Quick note, Matterport.com is the software company that's automatically putting these 3D tours together for us. All we're doing is pushing the button with the camera, basically taking the picture and then using the app to automatically send it to Matterport. When it's all put together, they send us the completed 3D tour. So there's really nothing we have to do other than A, pick which camera we want and B, push the button. All right, here's our Pro 2 again. What are the pros and cons of this guy? Well, let's start with the Pro. Uh, actually, this is pretty much the only Pro. The thing is really high quality. Like, the detail and quality that this thing picks up is amazing because it has all these cameras and it's got 
infrared in here, like an infrared beam, I think is right here. Uh, the, the quality is insane. The accuracy is the best that I have ever seen. Let's, uh, let's now talk cons because there are definitely some cons with this camera. Probably the biggest con is a personal frustration because I'm a very impatient person is I don't like how slow it is. Now, I know it didn't seem like it took a lot of time. I pushed the button and what am I complaining about? I'm pushing a button and I'm getting paid, right? But when I do larger scans and I'm trying to hurry, I'm racing against the clock because I'm trying to get a sunset scan or like a morning dawn scan, which are the best times to scan anyway, then I get a little frustrated when this thing takes as long as it does. I'm usually with a, like, let's say a 40 scan property, a regular three bedroom, two bath, it's usually gonna take me about an hour to get that done. So you're usually looking at somewhere between a minute and a half to maybe a minute 15 seconds to get your scans done using this camera. And that's you being as you know efficient as possible, correcting mistakes and marking up the floor plan. Uh, that's my biggest complaint with this. Uh, although my biggest complaint should really be the battery itself. The battery's great but my battery actually died last year uh, and I had to get that battery replaced. It died because I didn't use the camera for two months and I never charged it during those two months. So the battery drained to zero and never picked up a charge again. No matter how long I left it plugged in, the jumper cables I attached to it, okay, I didn't do that. But whatever I tried to do, I could not get this thing to pick up a charge again, which sucked. I even thought, fine, I'm gonna buy like a portable battery and tape it to the top of this and plug it in. So that way it thinks it's always plugged in. Yeah, it doesn't want to scan when it's plugged in. So I wasted money on that portable battery. <laughs> but the reason I was tempted to get a portable battery was because Matterport, I hit them up and they're like, oh, sorry, you're out of warranty. Uh, that'll be $635 to repair the battery. So I had to send this to them and they sent it back to me fixed. $635. And I paid four grand for the camera. You could get it for three grand now, so I know I got tagged, but still, that's a lot of money for a repair. Now, I know I could make the money back. That doesn't turn me off from using this, but it does make me wanna say, if you buy this camera, keep the thing charged. Now, the only other complaint I have for the Matterport Pro 2 is its size. I use a more sturdy tripod, so it takes up a lot of space. And in addition to that, because it's an expensive camera, I end up putting it into this Pelican case here, uh, which you can get, I'll link it below. It's a Matterport Pelican case, uh, fits in perfectly. You can put your little charging cable in here, which is nice. The camera fits amazingly in here. I'll show it to you. There we go. The cool thing too is I actually leave the little tripod mounting plate on here, mostly because I'm the kind of guy who will show up at a job with my Matterport and my tripod and then not have the actual mounting plate, which is really frustrating. So if you wanna double purpose the tripod, buy yourself an extra mounting plate. Uh, so I uh, like to put the lenses in face down and uh, kind of drop it into the pre cutout Pelican case here, and you can see it fits perfectly, including the mounting plate. Uh, so this is this is pretty nice. And then to close it, boom, there we go, done. Safe Pelican, foamed up, love it. Uh, and then I uh, throw that in my garage until I need it again. So obviously that takes up a lot of space. Comparing that to this is a world of a difference. This is the Insta360 camera brought to you by the most professional B-roll ever. You've never seen anything like this. This camera is really awesome. It's got its little battery pack here, which what I love about this is you could replace it. Because this battery is way smaller, it dies way faster, but you could buy yourself an extra battery if you need it. And it has a simple micro USB charger right here. That makes life pretty easy. And here's your little micro SD slot. And uh, we're gonna attach this tiny little camera here, which can fit in your pocket or your backpack if you wanna go on vacation. It's one thing that I really love about it. You put this little cover over the glass and there you go, you got everything you need. So this is the tripod that I use for this, which is also extremely portable because check this out. This is the Manfrotto 360 degree tripod kit. 
Yeah, but seriously, this is like checked luggage right here. This is the Pro 2. That's a lot of stuff and it's heavy to carry around. This can go in my back pocket. This is nice. So if you're traveling, convenient. I like this. In fact, I took this on a Disney cruise and here you could see I scanned this Disney cruise cabin using the Insta360. I would have loved to have taken the Matterport, but look at the quality of this Insta360. Not bad. I also ended up using the camera to scan our hotel room at the Magic Kingdom, which honestly, I just feel like I have to show this because I feel like we all need a little bit of taste of something else right now, since most of us are stuck at home. So I hope you appreciate this. But those shots were all taken with this tiny Insta360. Now in a moment, I'm going to show a direct comparison of scanning the same exact property with the big boy and the little boy. So you can compare for yourself. But let's first put this thing to use and show you how differently this works from this one. All right, so this thing's really easy to assemble. You just screw on the bottom, which makes life easy. And then uh, there you go. You got yourself your sort of monopod essentially. But I guess they call this like a virtual tour monopod. I personally like having the biggest legs possible at the bottom or feet or whatever you're called. You can even extend these, which uh, honestly pretty useful if you're in a backyard or something like that. Uh, one of the downsides I will say of this camera is if you're rushing, this thing has a much greater likelihood of falling. And a big risk factor for that is the lens is actually on the outside. So it's much more likely to get damaged. I actually dropped mine yesterday and I've got a nice little scratch right here now. Now don't worry, all of the comparison footage in this video was taken before this lens got scratched. I have not yet tried to see if that scratch affects anything. We'll find out. But the reason that scratch happened is actually kind of interesting. I just went to go look at a deal super fast and I thought, you know what, let me just throw this in the trunk and if I feel like it, I'll scan it really quickly. Well, here's a time lapse of how quickly it took me to scan it. It took me less than nine minutes to scan this two bedroom, one bath property. Yeah, it was a smaller property, but still I did 23 scans in under nine minutes using this guy. Let me show you why you could scan so much faster with this. So this one, like the other one, has a couple buttons as well, but all you have to do is hold down the smaller button and you turn it on. Uh, this other one is for like the menu and settings and stuff. I believe that has to do with all the other stuff you could do with this camera that doesn't have to do with 3D tours. So I just don't push things I don't understand. All right, we've got our green light. Let's go ahead and scan. Scanning, uh, dot, 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 there we go. We got our little chirp here, perfect. So we'll see how this scan completes. See, we started this at like 94, 96% and I'm already at 90% battery. Uh, the, the, the battery goes a little fast, okay? It's, it's planning to get one property done, but all right, there you go. So you kind of get an idea of, of the quality so far that you could expect. It's that That's not as perfectly puzzled together as what we saw with the Pro 2, but let's keep doing this. So I just set this behind a little bit. Let's scan again. I want you though to listen for the chirp that it does. There we go. Did you hear that? That chirp actually says I'm okay to walk back into the picture, which is really convenient because even though this is still transferring and still doing its thing, as soon as it goes bloop, I can walk back in the frame, pick the thing up, move it to a different spot. So we'll go ahead and put it right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit capture again. Boom, I can now move it again and put it over here. All right, I'm, I'm already ready to push the button again. <laughs> and I've already moved it, which is great. Like, this is way, way faster than the big guy. I, I'm waiting for that button. <laughs> Boom. Pop. All right, I'm gonna move it again. Boom, scan ready. Now I can do the same thing. I can mark up my boundaries, my mirrors. I can mark up my windows. I wanna make sure those are facing inside. There we go. And uh, we have done, with this camera, we did five scans. I would easily say within the time we did two to three in the other one. This camera's much, much, much faster. Now in this preview quality image, you can't really tell how great everything is, but we'll go ahead and enter our comparison now. As you can see though, the work that goes into both of these cameras is the same. You push a button. This 
happens to be you push a button and you can move faster. This one goes so fast, I don't even have time to play on my phone to check emails or to make phone calls because I'm just banging these things out. There's a reason I could do a house in like nine to 20 minutes. Most houses, I could fly on these. I kind of use these as my rough drafts, I call them because they go so fast. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. The Insta360 is only $399. And if you order using the link down below directly with the Insta360 store, you'll save on sales taxes. I personally am not a fan of bundling with the options they give you. I really like using the Insta360, buying that directly from their website, get their warranty, and then go to Amazon and buy that tripod that I recommend in the links below. Another pro, this camera is Fast. I mean, you're talking 20 to 30 seconds a scan compared to somewhere between a minute to a minute 30 seconds for the larger camera. So you're scanning two to three times as fast with this small camera. Unfortunately though, that does open a few of the cons. Because you can move faster and because it's a smaller, cheaper camera, you open yourself up to slightly lower resolution photos, slightly lower quality measurement taking abilities. You also open yourself up to the risk of knocking the thing over like what I did. Now let's enter the side-by-side -side comparison challenge. I'm going to show you both scans and I'm not going to label which one is which until after you get an opportunity to see both. So let's go ahead and start. Here is scan number one. Take a look at the lights, the darks, the window, take a look at the different areas of the house and kind of get a feel for this scan. All right, now here is number two. Again, take a look at the lights, the darks, the different areas of the house, the windows, different parts of the house, and just compare them side by side. Now remember, the Insta360 just takes one photo because it has one lens. The big camera basically merges together what all of the eight lenses see. So you definitely get a different exposure result with both of them. That impacts the quality. Now this is obviously a hoarder house, but here's a shot of the living room with camera one. Here's a shot of the living room with camera two. Did you guess them correctly? Camera one is the Insta360. Camera two is the Pro 2. Let's try it in the kitchen. Camera one, Insta360. Camera two, Pro 2. And let's do it once more in a darker room. Camera one, Insta360. Camera two, the Pro 2. As you can see, as the lighting worsens, the camera starts degrading more heavily with the Insta360. But as long as there's proper lighting, the Insta360 does a very good job. I personally still give the Insta360 an A compared to the Pro 2, mostly because you're spending $399 to get up and running instead of $3,000. And it moves a lot faster. Most people also, for practical purposes of viewing a virtual tour, don't necessarily need all of the quality of the Pro 2. So if you're thinking about getting into 3D scanning, my recommendation to you is start with the Insta360. If you get into a field where you're starting to work with architects or really luxury listings, maybe you wanna go ahead and upgrade to the Pro 2 in the future. But for 99% of us watching this, use the link down below and order yourself the Insta360. Now I'm gonna put a link to the Insta360 store. If you use the link for the Insta360 store, you'll actually save on sales taxes. If you use the Amazon link, I'm pretty sure you have to pay sales taxes, but there's a chance you might be able to get the camera a little bit faster. So evaluate your speed needs. Now let's talk about a business plan and who this camera is good for. Well, first of all, if you're an entrepreneur looking for a side hustle, especially during this crisis, you might find that virtual tour taking is an essential service. And you might be able to make a lot of money during this time where a lot of people can't go out. And you'd wanna really target people who need these virtual tours. My favorites, real estate agents, specifically real estate's local to you and higher end real estate agents. A lot of agents aren't yet familiar with 3D tours, so you might consider offering a free scan just to sort of try it out. That way you can provide a solid service upfront without charging them. An easy way to do this is just go to Zillow.com, go to the agent finder, type in your zip code and look for the agents with the most sales in your area. Property managers are another good option. Ordinarily, I'd also recommend hitting up contract and architects, but because things are somewhat slowing down right now in the midst of the crisis, contractors and architects might be less inclined to pay for 3D scanning technology. So really your primary audience right now might be agents, 
landlords, property managers, and a big one, if you can get in touch with them, the insurance industry, like claims adjusters. And this will also extend to potentially appraisers. Now, as far as your actual game plan, and again, leave me a comment, let me know if you want more videos on this, how to operate it, how to in detail create a business plan around this. But as far as an actual game plan, number one, buy the camera. Number two, create a basic website. Create some sort of name for yourself, like, meet Kevin scanning or whatever you could come up with, something that's easy to say and relatively short and easy for somebody to go. You know, Donald's 3D scanning, VenturaHomeScans.com, whatever, right? Uh, and then I'd uh, possibly recommend going to like Vistaprint and creating some free business cards just to get people going to your website. Although in a time of a crisis, using business cards is probably a bit antiquated. So I would say take advantage of building yourself a quick website. It doesn't have to be perfect, most important, things are your name, your phone number, your email address, and your pricing. Which pricing is exactly how we get into how to make money in this business. Pricing is really going to come down to your area and your locale. Oftentimes you can charge for a small three bedroom house, like 1500 square feet, somewhere between 175 to $350 for a 3D virtual tour of the property. Some Matterport scanners like to scale this on square footage or on bedroom. You really would be wise to do a quick Google to see what kind of competition you have and to see if you can still have a profitable business model by undercutting them. <laughs> Remember though, as with any business, most businesses rely on a solid reputation and that relationship that you build with people. So when you're going in and you're starting a business, don't focus on the dollars so much on day one, focus on building your brand, your reputation, and your relationships. And then people will use you for life. As long as you take good care of them and you're available for them and you help them with their questions and concerns. So how do you make $100,000 pushing a button? Well, you just do the math backwards. $100,000 divided by, let's say, an average net profit of $200 per scan. You know, maybe you charge $225 or $250, so that way it covers some of your scanning fees for the hosting and the upload fees. Well, $100,000 divided by $200 per scan divided by 250 days of working means you just have to do two scans per day at a profit of $200 per scan and you get your weekends off and you make $100,000. That is unless of course you land some luxury clients like Alex did at the beginning of this video who made $5,000 twice on two luxury scans. Congratulations, Alex. Well, there you have it, everyone. Follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. Check out the courses down below. Get your two free stocks with Webull. Buy those cameras, get the gear with the links below, and we will see you next time.